According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a con artist is a person who tricks other people in order to get their money. Now, NASCAR is no stranger to con artists. Just look back to the mythical L.W. Wright at Talladega in 1982. But that would be a successfully completed con job. Though I really want to add quickly that I in no way endorse conning people. If it's wrong for Toph Beifong to do it, it's wrong for you to do it. But there was a story so crazy, a con job so far out there, that I have no idea how it's not talked about more. The story of a refugee turned stripper, turned NASCAR team owner, turned fugitive. It seems like a story from the world of Talladega Nights, but this seriously happened in real life. This was a real person known in the NASCAR world as Angela Harkness, but this wasn't always how she was known as. Harkness was born in 1976 in Tehran, Iran. Her birth name was Fatima Karamkani, and her father was an Iranian civil servant and military officer. But in 1979, the Iranian government fell from the Iranian Revolution. In response, Harkness' family had to flee to the country of Germany. From what most reports say, this is where she ended up growing up, and we assume that she had a somewhat normal childhood. But in 1995, she began her life of conning. She moved to America, first to Texas, and then to California, and married a man named Rayford Tyler Jr. She did this while also becoming a 20-year-old stripper. But the bigger play here was that she was going to use her new marriage as part of a plan to scam her way into U.S. citizenship. Now, the plan fell apart, but to Angela's credit, she didn't give up. The next year, she met a judge named Dion Harkness, hence her more well-known last name now. The two were quite volatile towards each other, and on three separate occasions, police were called due to accusations of physical abuse from each other. At the same time, it was alleged that both were heavy drinkers and Angela used a lot of cocaine. Just going to put that out there. Might explain a lot coming up. With all things considered, because of this, Dean Harkness lost his seat on the bench as a judge, and he lost his ability to practice law. By November of 2000, Angela had given birth to a baby, and four months later, the added strain from this piled on with the other stress ended up getting to a boiling point. On February 24th, 2001, the couple fought again. Dion left, spending the next week in a hotel before killing himself with a 357 Magnum. Angela then would move back to Texas after this happened, and in this time, she had met Gary Jones once again at a strip club. These two hit it off and dealt in heavy fun through embezzling money. Jones was said to have borrowed sums of money like $138,000 and $295,000 from two of his sisters, respectively. He used this to spend $255,000 on Harkness, buying her a suburban Austin home and a new Mercedes. All of this while cheating on his current wife at the time. Harkness in this time, between her husband's death and her illegal escapades, claimed to have been a kindergarten teacher, a trophy girl, and a motocross champion, among other things. The next logical step that they could see fit was to write fraudulent checks and obtain bogus applications in their relatives' names. Now, the next step then was that the two wanted to scam their way into owning a NASCAR team. So Jones would borrow $320,000 in the name of his business partner, and Harkness would use $250,000 from a woman that she said was her mother, yet there was no proof of this. With this, among some other fraudulent loans, over the span of 2000-2003, they embezzled $1.3 million to fund this team. They did this because of the monetary allure of multi-million dollar NASCAR sponsorships. And back in 2002 and 2003, these sponsorships would be a huge, huge allure. And it isn't really as crazy to think about in this way as it would be today. So on October 25th, 2002, the team, Angela's Motorsports, was born. They managed to acquire engines from Robert Yates, as well as the equipment needed for two Ford Tauruses. So the team somehow was put in place all they needed was a driver for full-time. On the free agency market between 02 and 03 was six-time Bush Series winner Mike McLaughlin. After finishing fourth in the points, the best that he'd done since 95, JGR still had let the 45-year-old go. Angela's Motorsports was seemingly a good place to rebound at. While it was a new team, on the outside looking in, 
it really had a lot of upside. The team had run one race to establish itself in 2002, which was the Bush Series finale at Homestead, the 2002 Ford 300. With driver Jay Sauter in the number 02 Ford, they started off 31st and ended off 25th out of 43, while Kevin LePage finished 37th in their second car. It was a respectable start and washed away the bad taste of missing the race the previous week at Phoenix. The team only looked to be getting better as early 2003 Bush Series testing showed them to be the fastest cars at Daytona. 2003 looked to be a huge year. That was until reality slapped them in the face. But the team couldn't keep up with finances. Six million dollars in finances, that is. Checks bounced, and it probably didn't help that by January, Jones had been fired from Wells Fargo. The scam was unraveling on the big stage, smack dab in the middle of NASCAR's giant peak period. Harkness at this time didn't make anything easier either, as she threatened to have sponsor Wired Flyer pay $350,000 to her or face legal actions. Ironic. Well, when Harkness's check bounced for the engines, Yates had to send crewmen over to confiscate their assets from them. Follow this to the rapid conclusion that on January 28, 2003, the team officially shut down. All 17 team members were left without a job. Mike McLaughlin was left without a ride, and many were left with thousands of dollars missing that were stolen from them. So, how did Gary Jones and Angela Harkness respond to this monumental con job failure? Did they fess up? <laughs> I can't even finish that. Of course they didn't fess up. No, they did what any coward would do and they ran away. Jones laid low in America, but was arrested by the FBI at the sports grill that he operated and owned. He was arrested for theft, fraud, and embezzlement from Wells Fargo. As for Angela, she fled the damn country. First, she hid down in Mexico, but then soon after, she fled to the United Arab Emirates, where she would remain until her Dubai arrest in 2005. With this, the Iranian passport she had was confiscated and revoked. Finally, in 2007, she was brought back to the United States to be charged for her crimes. Once she stepped off the plane in New York City, she was almost immediately arrested again. She was tried in Texas and served three and a half years in federal prison. And you'd think that after all that, she'd try and start over and start a new life. Nope, not even close. She's been arrested twice since then, once in 2012 and again in 2018, and has been accused of abusing members of her family. Yeah, she's just a shit person all around. To this day, though, what Angela Harkness does is both unknown and also unimportant. She's a nobody at this point. But I will admit that her story has been a great blueprint for a great movie. If anyone's seen the film Shattered Glass, you'll know what I'm talking about here, of how this can be a very compelling story to watch on the big screen. But that's all I've got for today, and that's all I've got from this story. If you know more about this though, seriously, let me know in the comments because this is really fascinating stuff. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.